A while back, I made a video about why nautiluses survived the end Cretaceous mass extinction that took out the non-avian dinosaurs, while ammonoids did not, despite their similarities. And ever since then, you guys have asked me to make kind of a similar video, but regarding the survival of mammals over dinosaurs. So that is exactly what we'll be talking about in this video. So just so we're all on the same page, yes, mammals were around during the time that dinosaurs dominated the world in the Mesozoic era from around 250 to 66 million years ago. However, these mammals were more small and rodent-like for reasons we'll talk about later. In any case, they managed to survive the end Cretaceous mass extinction event that occurred around 66 million years ago, whereas non-avian dinosaurs went extinct. So in this video, we'll be talking about the potential factors that gave mammals the advantage over dinosaurs when it came to surviving that extinction event. First things first, let me just explain why this is important for us to study. There have been many extinction events throughout Earth's history, and they wipe out some species, but not others. A lot of this is based on chance, but a lot of this is based on certain traits that give certain groups of organisms advantages over others, like those that we'll be talking about today. And understanding the selectivity of extinction events is super important for us to predict the potential impacts of, for example, modern anthropogenic environmental changes or other modern and future environmental changes that are going on or may go on in the future for us to better conserve species and ourselves <laughs> as we go through certain climate and environmental changes into Earth's future. The Cretaceous Paleogene extinction, or KPG extinction, occurred around 66 million years ago. And it was triggered by an asteroid impact and in part potentially also major volcanism at the time. I talk a lot more about specifically the asteroid impact and the climate change that it caused that eventually led to the mass extinctions of crossed non-avian dinosaurs in my KPG extinction event video, which I'll link to the top right if you're interested, but essentially this event is famous for wiping out the non-avian dinosaurs, as I've said repeatedly. <laughs> But what also gets talked about regarding this extinction event, specifically right after this extinction event, is the rapid rise and diversification of mammals after non-avian dinosaurs went extinct, due to, in part, the fact that non-avian dinosaurs went extinct, opening up all sorts of ecological niches for mammals to take over, but also due to the splitting of continents. Yes, continental masses were still splitting after Pangaea formed around 250 million years ago. It takes a long time for tectonic plates and continental masses to move. Uh, so they were still splitting apart during this late Cretaceous into the Paleogene, the first period of the Cenozoic uh, time range. And during this split of continents, this led to a lot of what we call geographic isolation of certain mammal populations of the same species, which eventually leads to the adaptive evolution of those separate populations to their specific environmental conditions, which leads to speciation or the formation of new species over time. This splitting of continents was another factor that helped mammals diversify in the beginning of the Cenozoic era right after dinosaurs went extinct. And then the third factor that helped them diversify is the reestablishment of forests after the extinction event. The impact that led to the extinction event, and potentially also volcanism at the same time, led to a lot of dust and debris and ash being thrown up into the atmosphere, which blocked sunlight for potentially years, which drastically limited photosynthesis and caused the demise of a lot of vegetation-rich and forested areas. Uh, and that also cascaded down the food chain and led to a lot of the extinctions of the non-avian dinosaurs, as we'll talk about later. But even though mammals radiated and diversified super rapidly after this extinction event, they were not by any means unscathed by the event itself. In fact, they barely made it through. But it wasn't just by chance that they survived over the dinosaurs. There were likely many traits that gave them advantages. Leading up to the KPG event, mammals were doing pretty well throughout the Cretaceous period, which went from about 150 to 66 million years ago. 
Even though they were overshadowed by the large and dominant dinosaurs, they filled really important ecological roles at the base of the dinosaur-dominated food chain, like being bone crushers, flower eaters, insectivores, omnivores. This diversity in their respective ecological roles is one of the things that plays a major role later when we talk about the factors that led to their potential advantage in surviving the event. The majority of mammals during the Cretaceous period were metatherians, the early members of the marsupial line, and multiturbiculates, which are now extinct, but at the time were extremely common and abundant in the Cretaceous and throughout the Mesozoic era. Early cousins of placental mammals like ourselves, the eutherians, were present during the Cretaceous, but much more rare compared to the metatherians and multiturbiculates. And as you can see, even though placental mammals and metatherians today, or marsupials today, look very different on modern Earth, all these groups, even the multiturbiculates, looked pretty similar in the Cretaceous and throughout the Mesozoic. There was a lot of slight diversification in morphology and eating behavior and all those things that we'll talk about later, but they looked pretty similar. Um, and this just goes to show how dominant dinosaurs were and how much they kept mammals down to their little, you know, the ecological roles they played as small rodent-like organisms. So those were the mammals during the Cretaceous, but the immediate aftermath of the KPG extinction event in the earliest Paleocene, the first epoch of the Cenozoic era, was not pretty. We can tell that in the rock record, so much life just completely went missing, just indicating how many groups of organisms went extinct during this event. Almost all the mammals that flourished in the Cretaceous period went extinct. Only about 7% or about 23 species of mammals survived the event into the Paleocene, and only one of these was a metatherian, which led to now the marsupials that we have today. So imagine if this one species had not survived that event, marsupials wouldn't exist. So what allowed some mammals to survive over others? The surviving mammals were smaller than most Cretaceous mammals, and their teeth indicated that they had more generalist, omniferous diets, whereas the victims were larger and more specialized with carnivorous or herbivorous diets, and when disaster struck, their adaptations, their specializations, became their hardships. This is a really important point because we'll also hit this same point when it comes to dinosaurs. Essentially, when things are steady for a long time, when environmental conditions remain the same for a long time, organisms can become very specialized, which can be advantageous during periods of steady environmental conditions. But the minute things change rapidly, like during extinction events, which are due to rapid climate and environmental changes, these specializations quickly become the disadvantage for these really dominant species. Whereas the often less dominant but more generalist or adaptable species can obviously adapt more easily to the changes and therefore survive. In other words, when species put all their eggs in one basket in terms of becoming really specialized, this quickly leads to their demise when things change. This kind of reminds me of one modern, very specialized and dominant species today that might not cope so well with change. I won't name names though. In any case, in the early Paleocene, just after the event, eutherians, the ancestors of placental mammals like ourselves that were rare in the Cretaceous, actually became dominant afterwards. Their small bodies, flexible diets, and faster growth and reproduction rates allowed them to take over the newly opened niches right after the event and build new food webs altogether. So that's how some mammals survived over others, but what about why mammals as a whole survived over dinosaurs? Well, one factor, like we already mentioned when it came to some mammals over others, is size. It's often said that dinosaurs prevented mammals from becoming large, but in a way, mammals also prevented dinosaurs from becoming small because they were so dominant and diverse within their small-bodied ecological roles and niches that they played. And as we saw with some mammal species surviving over others, being small can be very advantageous. 
For one thing, smaller animals have a higher surface area to volume ratio, which helps them to dissipate heat more effectively and cope with rapid temperature changes, like those rapid temperature changes that were happening after the impact. As I talk about in my KPG extinction event video, the impact caused both rapid cooling and rapid warming trends. Right during and after the impact, it was major warming, especially in the regions surrounding the impact, causing major wildfires across the Americas, and it was just crazy heat that was going across that region. And then when dust and ash was thrown up into the sky, blocking sunlight for years, there was what we called an impact winter, and that caused major drastic cooling. And then there was drastic warming that happened in the more long term, but still short term on a geological time scale. And these temperature changes led to major extinctions for those species that couldn't handle rapid temperature fluctuations. These smaller mammals could also burrow or shelter in protected areas compared to huge dinosaurs which really had nowhere to hide from the rampant wildfires, acid rain, dust storms, impact ejecta, and other effects of the impact. And again, the ejected material from impact and the dust thrown into the atmosphere, as well as potentially ash from major volcanism thrown into the atmosphere at the time, sunlight was blocked for an extended period of time, potentially years, making photosynthesis extremely limited and killing off a lot of vegetation, which devastated both you know, the vegetation, the plant life itself, but also animals that relied on that vegetation, like large herbivorous dinosaurs and those that hunted those those dinosaurs. But smaller mammals required much less food due to their size and often had more generalist adaptable diets and could adapt to other food sources. This brings us to the second major factor that helped them survive and that is their diets. Mammals known for their very diverse diets that can adapt to various food sources are the ones that survived. And this flexibility in dietary range allowed them to find alternative food sources after the extinctions disrupted ecosystems and food chains. Another factor is niche. The difference in niches occupied by mammals versus non-avian dinosaurs at the time could have also contributed to the survival of the mammals. What does this mean? Well, essentially, it's just the ecological role that they played. Mammals might have had a wider range of ecological roles or been able to adapt to a wider range of ecological roles, making it easier for them to adapt or flee or leave or hide and find shelter from the effects of the impact, whereas dinosaurs were kind of left there being like, wait a second, I'm very specialized for this particular role and now my ecosystem's gone, what the heck do I do? I guess I'll just die. Okay, so it wasn't exactly like that, but you know what I'm getting at. <laughs> Apparently, also, there is evidence suggesting that up to 24 million years leading up to the KPG impact and extinction event, dinosaur extinction rates exceeded their speciation rates. In other words, dinosaurs were potentially already declining, especially in these groups shown here on the graph. We can see leading up to the KPG boundary over here, we've got the decline of these groups of dinosaurs. And this prolonged decline leading up to the impact made them much more susceptible to the sudden and catastrophic changes that the impact caused. This also potentially allowed mammals to diversify and take over the new niches that the dinosaurs were leaving behind as they evolved in the Cretaceous, leading up to the KPG extinction event, making them potentially, by the time the impact hit, a little bit more diverse and resilient to the changes that came with the impact. Stability, specifically what we call niche stability, might have also played a role. That is, that medium-sized dinosaurs tried to compensate for the loss of mega herbivorous dinosaurs leading up to the KPG boundary. These mega herbivorous dinosaurs were potentially declining leading up to the KPG boundary, and as medium dinosaurs tried to compensate, they just couldn't compensate for the loss of trophic resources. So, multiturbiculate and metatherian mammals stepped in instead. This was because dinosaurs at the time, again, were limited in their ability to adapt to new conditions, again, likely also because they were very highly specialized to their specific niche or ecological role within ecosystems. This niche stability made them more susceptible to extinction during the abrupt shutdown of trophic networks or kind of food chains during the KPG event. 
while the smaller and more adaptable terrestrial taxa like mammals increased their trophic impact and niche size. In other words, they were kind of increasing the range of ecological roles that they could play as dinosaurs were kind of decreasing theirs. So as dinosaurs were declining, essentially mammals were filling those other roles because they could adapt to them really quickly. And this, what we call niche flexibility in the mammals, allowed the mammals to adapt and survive the effects of the extinction cascades. In other words, as extinctions of the mega herbivores of the dinosaurs led to extinctions of those that ate them, uh, and so on and so on, this cascade of extinctions occurred down the food chain. And while those that were very specialized were hit hard by that because they were very secure in their place in the food chain, those that were more flexible and could change their niche or they had a larger niche range or could change their ecological role or kind of adapt to a different one, those survived because they weren't so stuck in their one spot of the food chain. One other potential factor is metabolism. Mammals are endothermic, or what is commonly known as warm-blooded, meaning that we can regulate our body temperatures internally. This would have helped during the drastic temperature fluctuations associated with the impact, but as I talk about in my Why Dinosaurs Were So Successful video, which I'll link to the top right if you're interested, many dinosaurs were also endothermic, or at least partially endothermic. So this might have helped mammals survive over some ectothermic or partially ectothermic dinosaurs, but there were other dinosaurs that were endothermic, so it's like maybe a factor, maybe not. Another factor that helped especially the placental mammals and metatherian mammals survive and diversify after the KPG event was the extinction of other mammals. Some groups of mammals experienced extinctions during the mid-Cretaceous, which contributed to the early diversification of Cenozoic mammals leading up to the KPG boundary. So it's thought that eutherians might have started diversifying due to the extinctions of other multiturbiculate and maybe metatherian mammals leading up to the KPG boundary, helping them to survive once the impact hit and diversify after the fact. The post-extinction event, placental mammal radiation, led to a great increase in body size because the survivors were filling the vacant niches left over by the large dinosaurs so they could become a lot bigger. They could finally fill those roles in the ecosystems of being the large creatures as well as the small ones, and so they did. And with the increase in body size, their brain sizes also increased, which led to further further radiation, diversification, and dominance. And this began the rise of the mammals. So I hope you guys enjoyed learning about the potential factors that helped mammals survive the KPG mass extinction. If you want to learn about why avian dinosaurs, aka birds, survived over the non-avian dinosaurs, I will link that video up here somewhere on the screen if it's out by now. It might not be. If it's not out by now, it'll be out in the coming weeks. So come back for that. And I will see you guys there. Bye.